So you want to sew a garment from the books of Janet Arnold, Nora Waugh, and other fashion historians? Well, one way to do it is to scale them up. Today we're going to be doing a crash course in every single scaling method I can think of for gridded patterns. I know there are tutorials out there already. My goal is to give you a general overview to help you decide which method is right for you and which of the tutorials below will be the most helpful if you run into problems. Before we get into that though, consider whether scaling up is the best option for you. If you're not sure, I've actually made a video that can help you figure it out. First, some tips that can be helpful no matter which method you're using. All 2D representations of real life objects will be a little bit off, doubly so when scaled down and then back up again. Some methods are more precise than others, but none of them are perfect. So after scaling up, make sure to true up your lines with rulers, curves, or by eye. Some pieces are just a waste of time to scale up, no matter the method. For example, any pieces that you won't be using, obviously. Plain rectangles, which do not need a special technique. Consider very large pieces, like skirts, on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're uncertain about, say, a complicated pleating diagram, you can scale up just that portion and use it as a reference, rather than the whole piece. And last, but definitely not least, make sure you know what the pattern scale is. It should say somewhere. In this survey of scaling images, I've arranged them from low-tech to high-tech, so let's start out with pretty much the lowest tech you can get, the longhand graph method. To draw a pattern longhand using graphs, you'll need two graphs, one that is the scale of the drawing and one that is full size. For the full size graph, you can draw it by hand, and you can also use a few different products designed for this purpose, graph tissue paper or the Dritz Superboard, for example. In Canada, the options for 1-inch gridded tissue paper were more limited than I anticipated. I combed websites which specialized in everything from quilting to tabletop gaming. The cheapest and most accessible option was the oversized pads of paper that are made for schools and classrooms. A very weird heads up, the cost of those pads triples with the addition of an adhesive strip along the back to make each sheet into a giant post-it note. When scaling images with no graph, like those found in Nora Waugh's books or Costume Close-Up, it is a little bit trickier. My best recommendation is to trace the picture onto a new sheet of paper and draw a scaled graph on that copy. If you don't care about drawing on your books, you could also do that, I suppose. I learned this technique in art classes when learning how to copy paintings. You find a corner close to the top of the pattern and then mark a point on your graph paper that corresponds to it. The best way to do this is to do the easy parts first. Like when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle and you start with like the corners and the edge pieces, you're looking for parts of the pattern that fall on intersections or run parallel to lines of the graph. I call these my anchor points. Count from the zero point of your pattern to the point in question two squares over, three squares down, etc. After you mark the anchor points, take each square in turn and try to replicate that exact square as best you can. You can reference squares you've already completed, but try to rely whenever possible on the anchor points. Next up on the rung of technological innovation is a pantograph. I will grant you this is a weird one, but it is so cool. A pantograph was first described by Greek mathematician Hieron of Alexandria. Its first modern recorded use was physicist Christoph Scheiner in the 17th century. It scales up or down an image using a combination of physics and geometry. Four bars join together to create a flexible parallelogram. Two pins are adjustable to increase or decrease the scale ratio. One pin acts as the stylus which you use to trace the original image. Another pin contains a pencil lead for drawing the new image. At first, this tool is awkward as heck, but it is great fun. I bought this at a hardware store for about $20. It can scale either up or down up to 10 times. A word of caution, the greater the scale increase, the wider the margin of error. When scaling a Janet Arnold pattern, for example, you're increasing the image eight times. If you make a one millimeter mistake on the original, it will be over three quarters of a centimeter out on the scaled version. This is true for any scaling method, but because the pantograph is tracing every wobble of your hand, it can be extra bad. A tip that helped me and that I will happily pass along to you is that the pencil end can be stabilized by securing a weight to it. I also helped steady it with my free hand while tracing. This can also be done with something called proportional dividers, which work on a similar principle. Another little tip, the word pantograph is used in a few other contexts nowadays. Searching the term will also bring up industrial scale laser plotting machines and pattern templates for quilters. 
Before we move into the 20th century with our scaling up methods, I'm going to say a quick thank you to my Patreon patrons. There are a few more of you, which is very exciting. I would like to especially thank Elizabeth, who gets a verbal shout out as the newest member of my Mary Shelley tier. Thank you so, so much, Elizabeth. And hey, cool name. If you'd like to become a Patreon patron to get behind the scenes glimpses at upcoming projects, vote in polls, and get advanced viewing of videos, among other things, follow the link in the description or in the card above. And speaking of more of you, this channel hit 10,000 subscribers last week? Uh, what? Uh, that is more than I ever imagined I would achieve with these weird little videos of mine, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy cats, this is amazing, and I'm unbelievably grateful to all of you. But I digress. Let's plunge headfirst into the 20th century. Scanning and printing. This is an option that works best if you have access to fairly robust image editing software, since increasing an image this much can create pretty large files. Most personal use scanners are on the smaller side. Scan the image in sections, since you don't need all of the pattern pieces to be in the same image file anyway. Once you've scanned the image, scale it up to the appropriate size in the image file. As I've mentioned previously, this pattern has a 1 to 8 scale ratio, so I will increase the image by 800%. Then you can print the image at home in a tiled format, or you can have it printed somewhere else, either in a tiled format or in an A0 coffee shop size paper. My local fabric store, Rickrack, provides A0 pattern printing for cheap, and they ship anywhere in the US and Canada. They're not a sponsor, I just really, really like them. Link in the description. I have made this sound pretty straightforward in that very short summary, but depending on your scanner, printer, and software setup, this part can get fiddly, especially with image formats, printing layouts, and etc. I've given you the broad strokes, but if you run into problems, this is where other more specific tutorials are going to help you out. The projector method. Now, regarding the projector, if you don't already own one, don't go out and buy one right away. First, your local library might have bookable meeting rooms, either with projectors already installed or loanable from the front desk. If you do want to own one, consider thrifting one. Projectors wind up in thrift stores and yard sales all the time. You could end up with a model that is much nicer, if slightly older, than anything that you could ever afford to buy new. No matter if you're buying new or used, one thing to make absolutely sure of is what cables are needed. So we will have the briefest of sub-sub tutorials so that you do not have to suffer as I have through the treacherous world of tech bro YouTube. This diagram is a basic breakdown of some of the most common varieties of display ports. Find the correct terms for what you need before buying any cords or adapters. If you can, buy a cord where each end is the correct outlet. If you can't find a cord with the exact right ends, adapters can be purchased for most combinations of plug and outlet. Keep in mind, the rule of thumb is the more connections, the more things can glitch, so try to reduce the number of connections whenever possible. So for example, this is a VGA to Thunderbolt cable, and this is a DVI to HDMI cable. And both of these have been ones that I've used in projectors before. Okay, now back to the sub-tutorial. If the pattern isn't already in a digital file, scan the image to your computer the same way as with the scanning and printing method. Set up your projection against a blank wall, floor, or work surface. You don't actually need as much space as I think everybody imagines. Remember that the projection only needs to be big enough for individual pattern pieces to be included. To get the correct scale, use a combination of the projector's position and your computer's zoom function. Confirm that the image isn't skewed by checking the scale at every corner of the display, not just one section. Now trace your pieces. Use masking tape to make sure that you don't harm your wall. And if you're using permanent marker, protect the wall with an additional layer of paper. And don't do what I once did and forget to put up paper altogether while tracing in permanent marker. True story. Voila! A pattern. You did it. However you did it, I'm proud of you. As I said at the start, this is a very brief overview, and I have no doubt that it will be more than enough for some and definitely not enough for others. I'm really hoping that this broad look at different techniques will give you what you need to go looking for more tips and help. That's why there are tutorials linked in the description for each individual technique, and I will link a blog post on my website where there will be even more links, tips, and resources. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe below to see more videos when they come out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon.